This is Wikipedia, a home for free information that is protected by strict contribution rules. But what if anyone could edit any article in real time with others? Well, here's the plan. Buy the domain, make a logo, and then win the main page. Looking at Wikipedia, they have their name, logo, and search bar at the top, and related projects at the bottom. I copied that layout entirely, and damn, it looks like absolute garbage. So I redid it like this. Now you can toggle the project list, everything centered, beautifully animated, and lightning fast. You can click this button to get a random article, or just search for a certain one. Since the search results are empty, we now need the actual articles. The first prototype looked like this. You have to provide the title and the content of the article, which didn't even support new lines at the time, so it was just a big block of text. The twist here is that anyone can edit any article on the site, and the catch being that edits are limited to one word at a time, with a global cooldown of 30 seconds. In other words, every user on the site can only change one word on any article every 30 seconds. I tried creating the edit page, and then I realized that we should probably finish article creation first. Reason being, this is what a Wikipedia article looks like as raw text. And it turns out, splitting sentences like those into to edit for words isn't as simple as it sounds. So I decided to first implement support for Markdown, which is a simple way to style text. You've probably seen it on platforms like Discord, uh, Discord, and uh, Discord. I don't know, bro. A random thing, but what the actual f fuck did I just do here? What? How did that happen? I eventually found a library for Markdown and tested it by writing an article about dogs. And goddamn, it looked like absolute dog shit. No pun intended. You see, Wikipedia has these things called right side infographics. And I made that up on the spot since I have no idea how they're actually called. But they provide images that don't take half the space on the page, so they're incredibly based. And I tried adding them to my renderer too. You can now add what I call a wiki box to the article with a description like this or with no description like this. And now the dog article looks way better. Another thing we have to port over from Wikipedia is the summary, which almost every article has. It provides a quick overview of the topic with an image. The custom component for it was pretty hard to pull off. Uh, ignore the image choice. The code. And get ready for this. Oh my god. Uh, uh, what the fuck? But I got it working with this syntax. First you start with dot 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 summary, an image, and then key value pairs until you eventually end it with dot dot dot. The end result looks like this. One feature you probably don't even know Wikipedia has is the table of contents. And look, I'm not saying I did it better, because I didn't actually do it better. Uh, it's automatically extracted from the headers in the markdown content, allowing you to share a URL that includes the header. And when others open that link, the page will automatically scroll to that section. Now, if you look at any Wikipedia article, you'll see that there's also something on the right side. And to be honest, I have no idea what most of these buttons do. I'm probably only gonna take the most important stuff. So now there's a tool section on the right side, with buttons for editing, viewing changes, copying the link, downloading, and viewing the page info. Copying the link copies the link, and downloading downloads the article. Kaboom. The file is saved in Markdown content with a short header at the top. The big issue with our article layout is that it's completely unusable on mobile. To fix this I had to look at how Wikipedia works across different devices. But instead of manually testing it on every phone, tablet and browser, I needed a faster way to get the real world examples. It would be insane to check how Wikipedia looks on every platform. So I used today's sponsor Mobin as my secret weapon. I pulled up their massive library of real app screens like Wikipedia here across iOS and Android. The beauty of Mobbin is that it's basically just a huge collection of production ready UIs. No concept art, no mockups, no random websites, just actual screens from real apps that millions of people use. I was able to see exactly how Wikipedia handles their sign up flow, article layout, navigation, searching, and more. And the best part, I was able to save all these screens to my personal collection for future reference. And if you need to, you can also share your collections with your colleagues or your friends. Mobbin's got more than 500,000 real app screens. If you need to borrow inspiration, you can just search for it. Wanna see how the pros build finance apps? Simply filter by category. They even let you search text and screenshots to find exactly what you're looking for. And you don't even have to be a designer. I'm mostly a backend developer who sucks at design. And Mobbin saved me from coding a UI that would have looked abysmal. And you can get Mobbin in for free using my link in the description. Thanks to Mobbin for sponsoring this video. And now we can view articles properly, access the tools and the table of contents in a separate pop-up, and basically do everything you can on the desktop version. And now getting to the fun stuff. The edit page. Again. It's basically a clone of the article page, except every word gets its own HTML tag, so we can replace them. It's a pretty simple concept, you type a word in the input on the left, and get a sticky note attached to your cursor, and use it to replace words. All good in theory. However, we then got to parsing words, and everything went to shit. Here's the deal. Normally you'd think, cool, just split text by whitespace, and we've got our words. And yeah, that works fine with plain text. Even formatting isn't an issue. But multi-word combination is where it all falls apart. The parser completely breaks when it hits something like this, thinks it's one word, and proceeds to destroy all formatting for the entire article. 
it gets even worse if the word you're trying to replace is part of a multi-word hyperlink. I ended up having to make the parser a bit more complex to handle these edge cases and now it can properly identify standalone words, formatting markers and multi-word combinations without shitting itself every time. Now it should work properly. Nope. Backend time! Another issue was the lack of synchronization between the frontend and backend since the backend only had a raw markdown with zero context about which element we actually send over. I tried fixing this with a word index, basically telling the backend that hey dog the word is roughly here. The problem with this approach was if you had similar words nearby the backend would just pick a random one to replace. Fuck! After a few days of this back and forth, we finally settled on sending the word plus its surrounding context, the last two words and the next two words. The context mismatch error, when the frontend didn't get backend updates on content changes, became such a common occurrence during the launch that it turned into a running joke. Anyways, after fixing that, this is how the edit page looks like. What you might notice, where's the fucking multiplayer? And now we have to make it multiplayer. When users enter the edit page, they connect to the WebSocket server, which adds them to an article specific pool. And now it's time to get kinda nerdy. As users hover or edit words, the client sends requests to API endpoints which publish events through Redis channels. The WebSocket server being subscribed to these channels broadcasts these events to all connected users viewing the same article. The client-side processor then handles these events, updating the UI with floating indicators showing other users hovering, and word replacement animations while the server manages authentication, enforces the 30 second cooldown and checks if the word is valid. Finally, whenever an edit happens anywhere on the site, it gets reported to our Discord moderation channel where our mods can click the inspect link and ban users who don't follow rules. The rules basically prohibit you from creating multiple accounts, posting explicit content, sharing hate speech, harassing others, distributing malware, using bots, posting illegal content, or trying to hold me legally responsible because fuck you. The privacy policy boring as hell, just read what I'm storing in the database, the code is public. Now that we did the moment of dog I charge you to yeah. the license, we can finally create a proper homepage. Yeah, the best homepage was actually a hero page, a decoy, a pawn. A uselessness. When you click the blip text logo anywhere on the site, you go to slash home. The home page shows the most active articles and a leaderboard of the most active editors and the most edited articles. The history page needed a revamp at that point since it was still using the old ugly styling. So now it looks like this. You can view every word that has been edited by users on a specific article. And if you're an admin, you also get the ban button to each history entry. And this badass looking admin label on the blip text logo site wide. Now that the site is pretty much done, we just need to populate it with wikipedia articles. Oh boy, we gotta get scraping. The first attempt was trying to make a AI parse it. So I'm currently trying to figure out a way to automate turning all of this from wikipedia into our format with a uh, deepseek cloud and uh, gemini and none of them work why do they all keep deleting everything except for the summary you're not supposed to only provide the summary keep in mind that if you will only provide me with the summary i will literally pour water on your servers Despite my best efforts at threatening AI, it still didn't work properly, until I tried Dipsy. Oh my god, we back again. Dipsy properly translated the Wikipedia article for dogs to a blip text page, including images. And I was amazed, until I realized it didn't include the images on the side, no matter how much I yelled at it. It seems to omit images. And then it started refusing to convert political content. 2024 presidential election. It doesn't want to do politics. And then we ran into content length issues. Hold on a damn minute. How much fucking data and information is in this? What? Oh boy, I gave the eye dementia. And after yapping for 10 minutes on why I was not going to write a parser for this, I ended up writing a parser for this. And so I started writing the base for the parser using AI. Now, time for a calm discussion. You cannot fathom how the organized the Wikipedia format is. I got a working parser in 3 hours and then spent days figuring out how to properly parse it. Just to outline some issues, Wikipedia image links can either come from comments or N, and there's no f***ing way of knowing which one it is without fetching them. Not to even mention how f their syntax is to begin with. The position of the summary box is so f***ing volatile, you have to record Cursively hunt for it through nested sections. There's absolutely no consistency. Nesting upon nesting. The library I was using to help me parse this was fucking called WTF Wikipedia, with the developer saying that the original format is very, very hard to read. We're not joking. 
And hell yeah, you're not joking. I don't know what tooling the Wikipedia editors get, but good god. There was still a ton of issues, but sort of insignificant, like extra commas or messed up link formatting. After all of this, I downloaded the entirety of the English Wikipedia, which again, was formatted in f knows what, requiring me to write 160 lines of Python just to turn it into a JSON file. It took one hour. I was scrolling to Instagram because the entire time. Anyway, we got 15 million articles from all of that, and I ran the parser on all of them. It took a few hours, but we eventually got 2,110,000 articles. We skipped the short ones since there was no point in having shorty articles, because you cannot add new words anyway, so you can only change them, so there's really no point in having articles that are one sentence long. Now it's time to release the project, and I got the Discord server to try it, which you should totally join by the way, I sometimes do beta sessions. Okay, okay, now the montage. Are we bowling? <clears throat> A quick summary. Our goal is to fuck up the entire article. Okay, stop, cha stop changing stuff. Let me finish. We have to make the article say that Linux sucks. Okay, that that's the whole thing. No. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, 18 people on the article. Uh, Linux sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Change it, change it, change it. Linux sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Windows sucks. No. Change the Windows to Linux. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Linux sucks ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we not change the first word? Let it, let it be Linux. Have my babies. No, Linux sucks. Okay, we have to somewhat coordinate here. We're not writing anything readable. I, I bought, bought a property in Egypt. And what they do for you is they give <laughs> okay, this is going to shit. Fuck. Okay, 25 people on the article. Let's... Should we change the article? Right, let's try. Let's try. To face the article. We are hopping articles. Six people, okay. So this one is shorter, so we should... Hopefully coordinate better. Okay, this is chaos. Rust made a jerk made like game made in Rust. What the fuck? Let's try writing the article like it was before. It is okay. A traitor is known for. Okay, we need someone to replace this word. Fake dev. <laughs> okay, okay. We're kinda getting somewhere. Face dev is a traitor. Windows user. Yeah, I'm a Windows user. As you can see, I got Windows right here. Get dev. The fuck? 9-11 was a job, okay. Why are there so many people hovering? There are 32 people? What do you expect? I don't know, I expected everybody to be on cooldown, not hovering everywhere. What does that even mean? Cool guy, ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's swap articles again, I think. Get script. Get a script. Isn't language, bleep text in the history, is a stupid language. Is a... Free up? He did not, no, no, uh, Rust is... Cannot fucking read. <laughs> the Skibidiri is popular web browser. What a Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Fuck is that? Sigma. <laughs> so let's try vandalizing the first section, changing everything to blip. Blip. I need to see everything be blip. Unblip. No, blip. We have to blip it. Blip. Yeah, yeah. Blip, pilb, dead. Blip, blip is a pilb. Blip, front. Blip, ipsum, dorum. Okay, that's a lot of edits. Hold on. Gonna fucking read. I think we did enough changes. We pretty much vandalized three articles and uh... <coughs> fuck, I'm sick. Yeah, we're gonna end it here. Thanks to everybody that reported bugs during the beta session. Add, uh, please add the names on the screen. And due to popular demand, I also added dark mode and linda mode, which is a more paperish color scheme for the site. You can try blip text today at bleeptext.com, get a bunch of your friends and edit any Wikipedia article on the site. The code is publicly available on GitHub. A big thanks to all of the Patreons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.